Just tell me about yourself. So, well, thanks for giving this opportunity to introduce myself. Sir. My name is Shevran Varasai Shrikant. I am from Ponnuru Bantu University. I am coming to my educational qualifications. Sir, I completed my B.Tech in Sentence College of Engineering and Technology in a stream of history. And I completed with a uh, 7.2 CGPA. Yeah. Mm. I am coming to my strengths. Sir, actually I have a world's biggest weapon with me. That's my communication skills. I can communicate freely in three languages, Telugu, mm. Hindi and English. I mm. am coming to my hobbies. Sir, actually I have a hobby of uh, learning new things. At present, I'm learning Python through Stack Post, and I'm a YouTuber, I'm a member, I'm a editor too. I'm mm. coming to my weaknesses. I actually have one weakness, sir. That's mm. uh, I have a more curiosity than a normal person. I have. So, like, uh, if I don't know anything about topic or some what others, I just can't think. So, that's my one of the weakness. So, I'm working on my weakness to make it one of my strengths. Mm. And coming to my technical skills, so actually, I'm a Python full stack, I'm uh, learning Python full stack course, and uh, uh, these are the technical course in that I am planning Python, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and uh, database uh, MySQL. And uh, one framework is uh, design. These are my technical skills. Good. Um, just explain about your academic project. You mentioned some projects, right? So just explain about it. So actually, I have done two projects. One is a mini project that is automatic water irrigation system. Mm -hmm. Actually, the main aim of this project is to supply the water efficiently to the fields. That's mm -hmm. the one mini project that what I have done. So actually, this is related to embedded systems mm -hmm. that's related to my core ECA. And okay. coming to my main project, <coughs> and coming to my yes, yes, please. Yeah. And coming to my main project, yes. uh, medicine delivering smart robot. The mm -hmm. main aim of this project is to uh, supply the medicines to the patients, uh, patients, uh, without interacting, without uh, involving of uh, humans. Actually, in COVID times, uh, COVID spreading is be done by using humans. Uh, or like that, right? So, we for delivering the medicines to the COVID patients, uh, instead of going the persons, uh, our uh, robot will be deliver those medicines to the COVID patient. Okay. So here we are uh, cutting the human to human interaction. So in uh, by this, uh, we are saving the lots of people uh, mm -hmm. for infecting okay. COVID. No, worries. I understand. Yes. So what is the role of you? What is your role in this project? So actually, I'm the project leader, sir. Project leader. Project leader. Okay, so you designed the you designed everything and you uh, you have uh, given it to the people. Sir, actually, sixty percent have designed and forty percent have taken from the coordinators. Okay, good. We have good. done few changes also in that by help of the coordinators. Okay, good. So, how much you rate yourself in Python out of five? Sir, actually, I rate myself as an eight point five in from ten. Out of five. Okay. 10. Uh, out of five. Okay. Okay. Good. So, what do you mean of variable? Yes, sir. Sir, actually, if you want to store an element. Uh, if you uh, first you need to understand how the data is storing into the uh, into the memory. Here we will first uh, we will take uh, a is equal to ten a variable. So the ten will be stored in firstly at uh, a memory location. So for a memory location we have uh, some memory location, right? So that memory location will be point out by our variable. If you want to call the value a is equal to ten, the a will be stored into ten. The a is called the uh, variables. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is this is this really necessary to store the value? Yes, sir, in my opinion. Okay. If you want to hold the data, uh, mm -hmm. remembering the address of the address of the memory location is a little bit difficult. If you want to call a data in the database or some other memory location, you need to call it by using uh, memory location. But uh, if mm -hmm. remembering that uh, memory location is a, a little bit difficult, so we are storing that. Um, uh, it's like a Variable is like a pointing towards that memory location. That's it. Okay. So, what is the use of if else if ladder? What is the advantage of using it? So, so actually, if else if ladder is a conditional dependent uh, thing, sir. Mm -hmm. First of all, we will check for one condition. If that condition is failed, then only if it goes to the, it will check for the next condition. Mm -hmm. If the, the first condition is, is true, then it will not check for the remaining conditions. Uh, it's nothing but uh, dependent conditions we are checking for that we are using the FLC flagger. What is the main advantage? Yes, I agree oh, yes, to sir. check the dependent conditions. Yes. yes. So actually, I think the performance will be increased by using FLC How? flagger. First, if uh, the first condition is satisfied, it will go no, not go to the uh, second right. So we are saving a little bit time. Okay. Extra processing time. Yes, you are extra not we are saving. Time. Okay, good. Can you please write a program? Like, I want you to find the sum of digit set even places in the given number. So, so for example, if I give 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
is the uh, number yes. so here 5 you will take as digit number 1 5 as digit one. first num first digit 4 as second digit okay 3 as third digit like that you take from this i mean i am giving you the digit numbering now i want you to find the sum of 4 plus 2 i mean fourth digit plus second digit okay, sir. i guess so even like places digits yes so it's like uh, reverse you do whatever you want, but I want you to find the sum of digits at even places. No, that is twelve hundred. I mean, twelve thousand three forty five is a single number. Yes, sir. Yes. Right, yes. Okay. Good, but uh, if you take a as the number, is this possible? So applying len function on top of a number, do you get anything? So I think we need to convert the string. Yes. If when it is string, then uh, your logic will work. Okay, no worries. Okay, tell me what is the difference between list and tuple? So actually, list is one of the data structure in Python, which is used to store the, uh, which is used to store the heterogeneous values. So actually, uh, list is a mutable object. For example, uh, if I want to add the elements into the list, I can update the list. So list is a mutable data structure. But the tuple is not the tuple is an immutable data structure. So once we create a tuple, we can't update the Values inside that tuple, and more about the uh, performance criteria, uh, tuple is more faster when compared to the list, and more about that list uh, consumes uh, more memory when mm -hmm. compared to the list. Okay, how tuple is faster than list? Yes, sir. So actually, if you want to understand this, you need to know how the data is storing in Python. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I created if I created a tuple with uh, one to three numbers. So the elements will be stored in adjacent memory locations. So 90% chances are there. So Python management, uh, memory management will done by Python. So is 90% uh, chances are there to store the memory in adjacent memory location. So recovering the data from adjacent memory locations is very faster in compared to the uh, in compared to the memory which is stored in some different different location so uh, tuple is immutable right so after creating we can't uh, update it but list is mutable so after creating the list like one two three numbers in it after that if i updated with the list with uh, four five numbers or uh, so uh, the data will not be stored in same memory location after updating uh, after updating so recovering the data from the uh, not ascent memory location will take a little bit time more okay. so tuple is uh, Faster than compared to that. Okay. So, what do you mean of generator? So, so actually, generator is a special function which uses yield keyword. Actually, uh, return has a capability of returning only one variable to the outside. Right? So, if I want to return multiple variables to the outside of the function, it's not possible by using return. So, why it's not possible? Yes, sir. We, we can possible storing the elements into the rest and we can return it. But in Python point of view, storing the elements in one area. And returning them is a wasting of the, the memory. function point of view. Yes, yes. Function point of view. wasting the memory, I think. So, mm -hmm. for that, uh, Python developer has invented a function called a generator. So, it will return the multiple values to the calling area. So, here uh, at calling area, we are getting the stream of inputs, right? So, you need to use a for loop to catch the inputs. Okay. What do you mean of anonymous function? So, uh, lambda functions are the anonymous function. So, there you we call them as a no name functions also. There is no name for that. And if you want to implement a small functionality in a large program, we can use these uh, lambda functions. And we can pass these lambda functions as an input to the some other functions also. Okay, very good.